So mobile gaming has always been a huge market. There's thousands of games that you can download on the App Store from COD Mobile to Candy Crush. It has an estimated value of around $94 billion, and that's just this year. And it takes up around half of the gaming industry's revenue. It's only a matter of time before crypto starts to break into this industry. And I think it's got a good use case with the whole play to earn system. There are crypto projects that are in the stages of actually doing this now. So today we're going to talk about that. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So we're firstly going to talk about Robo Hero. Robo Hero is a play to earn mobile game integrated with the Terra blockchain. There are over 2.6 billion mobile gamers in 2021. And with such a large number of players, Robo Hero hopes to capture some of this audience with their play to earn mechanics. The game has two modes in development. They've got a PVP and a PVE game mode. To play any of these modes, users must have Luna in their wallet. The main aspect of each game mode is the battle between the robots. Each Robo Hero has its own faction, rarity, stats, classes, equipment, and weapons. A lot of variety. The main gameplay takes place on a 3D map with an isometric view from above. The gameplay map consists of 115 hexagons in 11 irregular rows. There are 10 randomly generated buildings that are then placed on the map each time. These are kind of like a strategic element in the gameplay. The buildings actually limit the visibility on the map, so you can pretty much take cover behind them. And these can also be captured during gameplay to increase your Robo Hero's strength. There are two ways of winning each battle. Number one is by defeating the enemy's Robo Heroes. And number two is by capturing the majority of the buildings on the map. So six out of the 10 buildings. Every time you win a match, the user is rewarded with Luna and Robo. Robo is the native token. To actually begin playing this game, you need a Robo Hero. You can acquire these Robo Heroes by buying blind boxes. And this is going to be able to be purchased on their app with the, the native token Robo. This will end up being a completely random Robo Hero. The PvE battles are the same as the PvP battles, uh, apart from the fact that there's more story in the PvE as well and the AI is, is controlling the enemy. Only Robo can be earned in the PvE mode as well. The game isn't actually currently released yet, but the app is available to be downloaded on the App Store or the Google Play Store. You can currently download this app and you can watch ads in there to generate tokens. On the white paper, it says you can receive a free Robo Hero to get started. And I'm assuming this is gonna be a feature when the game actually fully releases. One unique feature that I saw with the game is that there's gonna be in-game billboards on these randomly generated buildings. These billboard spaces are actually gonna be NFTs that you can buy on their NFT marketplace meaning that you can actually advertise your business in-game. In terms of Robo's utility as a token, it's going to be used for a number of things. Firstly, it will be the currency used to buy and sell your items. Uh, you'll be able to stake it, farm it, and also earn it through playing the game as well. It's going to be used in the NFT marketplace that they are currently developing, and it's going to be used to upgrade your robots in gear too. Lastly, it's also going to be used to buy those blind boxes. In terms of how easy it was to set up, it wasn't too bad, but I could definitely see it being a problem uh, for people who aren't familiar with crypto. For me, I had to download the app from the Google Play Store, which is easy. But then from there, I had to download another app called Terra Station, which is the wallet that's needed to actually play the game. So I had to go through the process of then creating a wallet, saving the password, saving the recovery phase. An issue with this wallet is, as well is that I can't actually buy Luna from that wallet so it means i have to go to another another app essentially to then buy luna to then send that across to the wallet so i could then use it within the game a little bit confusing and it's a bit clunky um in that sense but i mean there's not really anything that they can do other than maybe offer a choice of you being able to buy luna throughout through the app maybe some kind of um Apple Pay purchase or Google Pay purchase or something within the app. It's still in the early development, so I'm assuming there might be something like that in the future. So just to kind of round things off, uh, the game isn't released yet, but you can download the app and start watching ads. And these ads will earn you crypto that you can use in the game when it comes out. The release doesn't look too far away. When I was looking at the roadmap, there's only a couple of stages left for them to actually complete before they release the first version of the game. And that first version is going to be the PvP battles. The PvE battles are supposed to come later on. The next project I wanted to talk about is Coin Hunt World. Coin Hunt is a Pokemon Go style play to earn slash move to earn mobile game. Users can walk around and use keys to open vaults. When a vault is opened, the user is prompted with a trivia question. If this question is answered correctly within the given time limit, the user is then rewarded with cryptocurrency, NFTs, and also in-game items. Uh, for example, I went on a, a short 20 minute walk and I opened two vaults. For example, I opened two vaults on a walk and received Bitcoin and Ethereum as a reward. I also received NFTs and items that could also be used in-game. It's recommended that you actually place your headquarters, which is another feature, um, just at your workplace or at home or somewhere you'd frequently go by. Uh, once this has been upgraded to level four using the in-game resources, you can access user vaults and auction houses for the NFT sales. 
There are collectibles called Cubies that can be printed at print shops around the map using QB blueprints. Uh, they come in various rarities from common to legendary. There's also some special events that occur every now and then as well. Uh, just And they introduce sort of new Cubies into the game, whether that's uh, a, a launch in a new country or whether it's just a limited time event like there is one at the moment and it's the Hawaii event. After playing for about 20 minutes, I can definitely see some similarities between Pokemon Go and Coin Hunter. It's pretty satisfying once you get into the game. It feels quite well made. It's a lot easier to sort of set up and play over the game I've talked about before. And it's actually an app that you can play now as well. I've got a couple of concerns with it and I'll sort of mention it now. Uh, one of my main concerns is that there's barely any info on the website. Like when I go on to the main website of Coin Hunter, it immediately comes up with a leaderboard and download now and there's nothing else really there. And as you sort of delve into more tabs on the website, there's not really a lot of info there either. I mean, the about section is a couple of paragraphs. There's no white paper. Yeah, it just seems to be a bit of a lack of information there, but I'm assuming maybe if they come out with a token one day, there's, there'll be a full white paper and everything. Another thing as well is that there's no actual tutorial in game. So when I first started, it just put me down and I had to kind of guess what to do. So it'd be nice if they had some kind of tutorial just explaining what each thing is when you see it for the first time. The game is very simple, but it is still really nice to actually play despite the reasons I've just mentioned before. I found a Wikipedia that explains each item in more depth and all the information on the game is basically in there. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. In terms of actually moving to get the vaults, I don't know if there's anything in place to actually stop you from just driving to these places at the moment. Even though it's inspired on sort of walking slash running, I don't know if there's anything in place to stop you from using another means of transport to get to these vaults. It does say on that roadmap though that people who actually decide to walk uh, will get rewarded more in the future. I think this game would be 10 times better if it just had a simple tutorial just to give you an idea for new players of how to actually play the game. It took me so long to actually figure out how to do things sort of once I'd gotten home. I'd set up a HQ and done all that sort of stuff and then there's things inside the HQ and I didn't really know where to get the descriptions for the items that I'm earning and things like that. It was just a bit confusing. Other than that though, it can, it's definitely a method that can be used to get you outside, even if it is driving at the moment. And it's also a way of testing your trivia knowledge, I suppose as well, get the brain working. In terms of actually moving the crypto rewards that you earn outside of the game, it requires 10,000 resin to move it, which doesn't seem that hard as from opening two vaults, um, I managed to get 6,000 resin, so. Not too bad. As you can see, there are a couple more features in that game, but there's not really anywhere explaining too much what they do. Um, there's a sort of the key system. I was given 50 blue keys when I first started, and you can earn more keys through opening these boxes. You can combine keys to get more rare keys, and depending on the location you are, there's different rarity vaults. So that's kind of how it works. It looks like cities are definitely sort of the hub um, for a lot of these um, sort of rarer vaults. And if you live in the countryside, then there's not really a lot going on at the moment. That might change as more sort of users um, start to use the actual platform. I'd like to see more mobile games sort of entering the market with some kind of play to earn slash NFT system. I think mobile gaming should be more of a focus because it can literally be done from anywhere. You can do it sat on your toilet, in the shower, if you've got a waterproof phone, <laughs> if, you, if you decide to do that for some reason. But that's besides the point. You can literally do it everywhere. I'd like to see sort of Clash of Clans in the form of NFTs as well. That'd be quite a nice game. As is the usual with crypto games at the moment, a lot of them are still in development. So I don't really expect any AAA titles to be coming out anytime soon. But I've got a feeling that one year we're just going to get the gaming year, whether it's mobile gaming or just crypto gaming in general, where all of these AAA titles are just going to come out at the same time. That's going to be everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. Um, but one thing extra, make sure you look at it in the description. We have a Discord channel. Yes, we have a Discord channel. You can talk to me. You can talk to the rest of the team. You can put forward your own ideas. We can have conversations about literally anything. Post your memes. Do whatever you like. Just uh, obviously within the rules. But yeah, please join the Discord. It's going to be the hub of the Gen X community. So make sure you get yourself in there. Don't miss out. But yeah, that's going to be everything. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.